Hello, and thank you for stopping by. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when new videos arrive. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between rights and privileges. And what is the difference? Is there any difference? Do we care? These are obscure, if not important, questions. Something only an idle thinker would ever spend time to ponder about, let alone write an essay on, or do a commentary. Yet, no matter how trivial others may think it, such questions should be asked and receive logical answers as well. To initiate this conversation on two similar yet altogether different concepts, quotations and examples shall be given to distinguish and then explain them. A privilege is a special entitlement granted to restrict group granted to a restricted group or person, either by birth or on a conditional basis. And it can be revoked at any time. By contrast, a right is an irrevocable and inherently held by all human beings. It is self-evident and universal under the laws of nature, which means that the majority of the people consider it a right. See, that's the thing between the rights and privileges. If a group of people do not think of it as a right, then it's not a right, even if it is a right. Even if it is a right under the Constitution of the United States, there's going to be people that will not want it to be a right, therefore they will not think of it as a right, and it will eventually become a privilege. Though there is such a thing as legal rights, the focus of this discussion will be upon natural rights, that is, those rights which are inalienable. Now, just because they are inalienable, that does not necessarily mean that they will be upheld as your right. I'm going through a situation where I have the inalienable right to free travel using the mode of transportation of the day. And today, this mode of transportation is an automobile. Although I do believe that it is a right that I have, the court says that it is not a right, that it is a privilege. Why is it a privilege? It is a privilege because, one, the majority of the people do not see it as a right, and two, the states have figured out how to make money off of that. They are not going to allow me to take money out of their pocket by admitting that it is a right. What qualifies as a privilege? In a broad sense, it refers to special powers or immunities held as a consequence of political power, social status, or wealth. While an individual has the right to own and live in a home, a state governor is entitled or given the privilege to live in a specified residence during their term in office. Such an example elevates that person giving them status and power that others no better or no less do not get to experience unless they are too elected into that particular office. Governor's Mansion. A privilege is sometimes, a privilege is something, a privilege is something a particular individual or group are allowed to do which others do not have permission to do. Since driving is a privilege, and yes, driving is a privilege, traveling is a right. Driving is a privilege because we are granting permission to those making commerce. We are granting them the right to be on our roads. We are granting them the right to make money off of our roads that we have been given 
and the federal government has given those roads to us, the people. Privileges are prominent everywhere within society. Participation in certain events or functions is meant exclusively for members of those who qualify, such as at golf clubs, places of employment, and business establishments. You have a right to use the bathroom, but you do not have permission to use this bathroom, paying customers only. You have a right to use a bathroom, but when it comes to businesses that own a bathroom and they say privilege of paying customers only, you do not have the right to use that bathroom. Only the paying customers have that right. So what qualifies as a right? To cite the American Declaration of Independence, all men, meaning all mankind, are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, such as life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way. All men are not created equal. Some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some are skinny, some are smart, some are slow, uh, some have a full head of hair, some don't, some have great eyesight, some don't. Some can speak, some can't. So in that respect, we are not all created equal. We are all different in that manner of speaking. But as far as being, uh, being born, unless you're Jesus' mother, you are created the same way, pretty much. And I think that's kind of what they meant. They were trying to say that under the law, we should all be treated equal. We are all equal. But they worded it the way they worded it. And I find offense with that because we are not all equal. I mean, I'm, I'm not skinny anymore. I'm fat. A friend of mine is ultra skinny. So in that respect, we are not equal. He's not fat and I'm not skinny. It was supposed to be property when they said in the pursuit of happiness. It was supposed to be the pursuit of property, but because they've changed it to take out property, which meant that we have the right to pursue property or to obtain property, that would kind of get future governments into hot water when they want to declare eminent domain. However, there was a conflict of interest during the drafting of the Declaration, eventually with the Constitution, as some held that the slaves were property and therefore men had a right to own other men, while others contested that no man, regardless of color of their skin, should endure what the American Revolution would free the colonies from with regards to Parliament and British Crown. For tyranny and slavery go hand in hand, and, and it does. John Locke was the first to summarize the three most basics of these natural rights. He stated that everyone is entitled to live once they are created, that everyone is entitled to do as they please as long as it is not conflict with the first right, and that everybody is entitled to own all they create or gain through gift or trade so long as it does not conflict with the first two rights. For in order to pursue happiness, one must be able to live how they choose and how best to sustain themselves and their families. Property, usually referring to land, housing, and or livestock, is the primary and most basic way of sustaining oneself as well as a family. Happiness and property cannot be experienced or owned without life, or rather if one is not living. And life cannot be experienced to its fullest measure if others intrude upon it or infer with it, interfere with it, which is why life, property, and happiness are so greatly dependent upon liberty, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. A better quality of life while pursuing your liberties. 
a better quality of life while enjoying your liberties during the pursuit of what makes you happy. Liberty itself is dependent upon each individual to defend and maintain it, which is why every person has a right to bear arms for which to defend their homes, their families, and themselves from any enemy, either foreign or domestic, or even a tyrannical government. It cannot go without saying that the founding fathers of these United States of America purposely, purposefully, purposefully included the Second Amendment immediately after the first to ensure that if no person could speak or assemble peaceably in protest against the government, then the only course of action would be to fight against it, to fight against the government. For no other way can be, for no other way can any person do anything if they cannot defend themselves when reprimanded by those who persecute them for their thoughts, their words, or their beliefs. Ultimately, a right is the ability to decide for oneself to make a choice. Exercising a right is always a choice. Now, we can exercise our rights, but the federal government, the court system, and other people within our society can tell us that they don't believe that it is a right, that it is a privilege. So how do we deal with that? Choosing to not exercise it is still a choice. Your rights. A decision based upon thought. That is the core of all inalienable rights. This is what fundamentally distinguishes a right from a privilege. Whereas a right is something that cannot be done because it originates commonly within all individuals. Whereas a right is something that can be done because it originates commonly within all individuals. A privilege is something that cannot be done without permission. Hence, traveling in an automobile, they have taken away that right and turned it into a privilege by labeling everybody a driver. And over time, everybody in society pretty much has decided that they do not want traveling in a car to be a right, they want it to be a privilege because they have had to get a driver's license. They think everybody else should too. The freedom of speech or religion of the press and to peaceably assemble are not privileges. No man, woman or child need ask for permission to exercise these rights, but we do because to hold a rally we have to get a permit that the city has to give us and they tell us where we can go and where we can do these things. So in a sense, those rights are now privileges. Nor does any government instituted by any collective body of men have the right or authority to deny or circumvent such rights, but they do because they sometimes will not give you a permit to assemble if they think it's going to cause them trouble. Governments do not grant rights since governments are a creation of the coalition of men, but rather are meant to protect those rights for all people. Is the confusion between rights and privileges the reason we have such big government? They keep us confused about what is a right and what is a privilege. Things that should be a privilege, people want to be rights. And things that should be a right, people want to be a privilege. What do you think? How do you see your rights and privileges? Do you think the government has the right to decide what we can and can't do? Do you think it's better that they do that in order to keep us safe? Would you rather sacrifice your safety to keep your freedom? Or would you rather give up a little freedom to have safety? Put your comment below and let me know what you think. If you would like to 
read uh, this. I'm going to try to put it in the description below so that way you don't have to endure this long 15 some minute video. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and hit the like button and also hit the subscribe so you can be notified when new videos arrive. I'm going to leave you on this note. Remember, make tomorrow better than yesterday by doing the very best we can today. Have a good evening, America, and all points beyond.